<laughs> here's a bunch of our tomatoes that I've picked over the last week or so that we still need to eat. <laughs> they look they look pretty massive. I'm pretty happy with them. Pretty happy is an understatement. I'm super happy with them. Um, and a lot of these I'm actually going to um, cut the core out and score the bottom and freeze them to make try and make spaghetti sauce or pasta sauce or something like that. But um, I really like the yellow Dr. Witchy ones um, on sandwiches because they're sweeter and that's sort of just what we've worked out that we like. And here are um, two that I picked just yesterday. These are the triple crop and see they have the string attached. So these are the ones where I have put blossom bags over the flowers. So I'm gonna collect seeds from these ones and I'll know that they are definitely gonna give me triple crop tomatoes when I plant those seeds. They won't, there's no um, chance of it being um, a cross. A cross is not bad, it'll just be something you might get a different tomato. But I at least know I'll get the um, same tomato from these seeds. I've actually got some um, seeds that have been fermenting. They're, they're pretty much done, these ones now. These are from the Dr. Witchy ones and I just wrote T2T on there so I knew that these ones were true to type because I was actually saving seeds from some of the others that I didn't um, mark um, just because I've still got a chance of getting the same tomato but these ones at least I know that they're um, going to give me a yellow Dr. Witchies again. And these ones are also from um, Dr. Witchy tomatoes but these ones weren't ones that I um, specifically excluded and so that's what I've done and put them scoop them into a cup of water um, and just kind of twirl it around every couple of days and then I um, I did replace the water a couple of times because it does sometimes get a bit mold and stuff on it and I just sort of strained it through a sieve and then when it's starting to look like this then you can strain it out again and put it onto a paper towel um, and let them dry. These are all dry now. I just need to take them off the paper towel and put them into a little pocket like that. And then they're ready to be planted whenever you want. So let's go out and see the garden. So it's a little bit um, messy at the moment here, but that's only because my husband colored my bed. So he painted a green for me. I think it looks awesome. So this is sort of um, my potting bench where I can do um, potting and, and whatnot for the garden, which is really cool, which is here. And you can see that there's a lot of blank spaces now. So a lot has changed since the last time I showed you guys. Here are the potatoes down here looking pretty rough. Um, you can see the leaves have been getting eaten and that's um, this little bug here, the 28 spotted lady beetle. She's um, been eating through the leaves, there's been heaps of them all over here. Um, and I kind of just left it because I'm pretty sure these um, will be ready to harvest round about now. I forgot to write down when I actually planted them but I feel like it's been about three months so I'm going to look at um, digging them up and hopefully we will have some tomato uh, potatoes under there. So they're the purple Congo potatoes those ones and then next to them I've got some of the sunflowers um, which are kind of past their prime. There's a couple little ones left over there um, but they'll be coming out soon because I have nothing in this space. Um, it used to be the golden zucchini squash so I just need to work out what I want in here and plant it. And this here, since it since I ripped everything else out, this really exploded. And this is the purple prince zinnia. So it's kind of a bit more, I would say more magenta -y than purple prince, but it's still absolutely beautiful. It was leaning over quite a lot and putting shade on. I've got some more seedlings in the ground that I'll show you. So I've put some stakes in either side and some twine to hold it up a bit so I can get some more light to the rest of the garden. It's got cobwebs all over it. But this one was really cool. It's got like three flower heads sort of all in one, which is kind of neat. So some of the seedlings that I planted, um, I planted three more types of zinnias and one sunflower. So this one is supposed to be a queen lime zinnia. Um, and that one I think is Redmond cactus zinnia. 
Um, there's the sunflower there. It's a, um, it's a big one. I think it's striped mammoth or something like that. Well, it just says mammoth, <laughs> so we'll see. Um, maybe it's not a grey striped one. Maybe it's just a mammoth. Um, so I don't know the variety. And this one is polar bear zinnia. So I left. Um, I try to just leave one when they get bigger, um, so that it has a space to grow. Like that's just one zinnia there. Um, but I saw this one was getting nibbled on, so I left the second one a little bit longer. But they seem to be going fine, so I might take it out, risk it. So that then this one is not taking any um, energy from that one growing there. And down here's the um, orchid cream nasturtium, which is looking a little, a little bit um, sad. So I don't know if it's just sort of petering out. It has been pretty hot. And um, I think nasturtiums can suffer a little bit in the heat. Um, but what is cool, as you can see, all of these down here, these are all um, nasturtium seeds. <laughs> so like I, I like, I quite like leaving them in the bed because then you just get random little um, volunteer plants popping up um, in different growing seasons. So I'm sort of leaving it in there. Uh, while I have nothing else in because the bees are still coming to um, some of these flowers. So while I've got, while I don't have a lot of flowers and other stuff in the garden at the moment, I've left it in. Um, but that means this whole space doesn't really have much else in it at the moment. So when things get a bit bigger or when I get a, a moment, I might actually come out and take that out, plant something else. I might actually come in and plant something in here. I don't know if I want to put a squash in here or not, maybe, but I could plant them and wait for them to um, come up and then take that out to give it room for the squash to spread out or something like that. And then over here, I planted some beans. Um, I got, I put in three different kinds. Um, this first one, what is that? Red rooster bean. So these are all um, supposed to be bush varieties. So it's a red rooster bean there. I think it's a bolotti kind of bean, but I've planted all these um, with the intent to just eat them fresh. So you just pick them um, when they're smaller. You don't wait for the, the beans inside to form. Um, and they should be quite nice. I haven't tried this one or this one before. This one is a royal burgundy bean. And this one is my dragon's tongue bean, which I really like. And it's been pretty hot, so it got a bit scalded. Um, I probably should have watered it sooner than yesterday, but they should pull through. And this is a big empty space as well. Um, it had the tomatoes here. There was a big um, two squash plants here um, and big crazy Santorini little um, tomatoes here. So I ripped them all out because they were um, pretty much done, really sick and just birds were coming and eating them before I could get to them. So I ripped them all out. Um, and now I need to figure out what I want to plant in here. Um, I probably, I put heaps of the flowers um, in that bed. So I'll probably put some food um, in here. I wanted to have, I didn't want to put too much in the garden to maintain because I'm 27 weeks pregnant and I wasn't sure how I was going to go with maintaining all of that. So while I've got little Bobby with me, I wanted to put something pretty in the garden that didn't take a lot of maintenance, but I still want to grow some food. So that's why I've got a bunch of flowers um, in that first bed that I've showed you, but I still want to have um, produce growing that we can eat and use, um, but so I don't have to overexert myself um, or let the garden suffer from me just not paying much attention to it. Um, so there's also a couple other things in here. This is the, um, I always keep forgetting what this one is. Mini sweet yellow. So they've kind of gone more orange. I had to stake them up because ants made nests in the bottom where their roots were. And so they look much happier now that they're standing up. We've got heaps on there I need to pick and do something with. I was thinking of actually just picking them and um, cutting out the core and stuffing them with cream cheese. I think that just sounds really good because they're quite sweet. Um, so I do like them and they're very cute and they don't take up too much space. I didn't think I would grow them again, but 
because they are pretty neat like that, I may, we'll see, it just depends. Um, they, I feel like they taste sweeter than the other red Marconi peppers I have in a pot down the other end, but um, that's sort of, we'll, we'll see how useful they are. But these ones I love, look how cute they are. It's beautiful purple, the, the ones that are um, closer to the sun are much more purple, whereas these ones down in here that um, have not had as much sun are very pale purple. I need to pick them and, and use them. I've had some sauteed um, and they were pretty good, but I really want to um, slice some of them long ways um, and just drizzle like some olive oil and salt over them. Um, like maybe um, either just on the stove or on the barbecue, but I'm really keen to try that. There were some sunflowers in the middle there as well, which I've pulled out, giving um, the eggplant just more space. This is the this Listata de Gandia, yeah. This one, that one, and that one. And these ones here were just two perpetual spinach starts, which have gotten massive. And I haven't done anything with them because what I used to do with them, I haven't been eating because I haven't been having any um, soft poached eggs. I was thinking of making a, a spinach and feta quiche. Um, and so I'll be able to use a bunch of this. I also ripped out the um, Cosmos that I had here. There's still little um, bits of dead flower heads. So as I ripped them out, I actually like sprinkled, I did save some seeds in a packet, but I also sprinkled the seeds just like in the bed because it'll be totally fine if I get some random cosmos coming up because they were pretty pretty. And then I've just got, it also makes room now um, for the strawberries here, which were getting pretty overcrowded and they're still a little bit crowded with the spinach there. So they're still doing pretty good, but um, I think they'll do better not being so crowded in. I was so surprised at how everything spread out. A lot of these things got a lot bigger than I expected them to, which I didn't account for when trying to space them out well. Then over here, my trellises, the um, things at the bottom are doing okay, but everything growing up is kind of looking pretty sick. Like, look at this poor thing. This is the golden midget watermelon. I've been calling it the, um, the tiger melon which I'm pretty sure it's not because it doesn't look like that and it's very golden so it's really sick and <laughs> most of it has died um, I think I need to maybe sacrifice some of these smaller fruits to let this one finish ripening this is the biggest and best looking uh, fruit that I've got on here so there are some others on here but they're not looking very great this is the next biggest one so I'm not sure um, it needs to come out soon anyway I'll at least keep that biggest one on and then maybe pick some of the smaller ones um, just so any energy has got left which I think is minimal because there's hardly any leaf growth still alive um, and then I'll rip that out and there is actually a tomato plant in here this one's really gross down here. It's been the most neglected, the poor thing, because I planted it here. It got sick first. It was really slow growing. And all of this beautiful purple basil <laughs> has gotten so tall. And this one, see, it's all like bent over. This is the top of it here. See, it looks, it looks pretty yucky. So, oh look, I've got some bees. So the basil, I've let a lot of it go to seed because the bees love it and it smells really good. Um, so I've also got um, some green basil. This one looks a bit sick as well. I'm thinking it's maybe it's because it's next to all of this that's not super happy. There is some parsley down here though that um, still looks pretty good. So I'll leave that in the bed and I'll still leave the basil in because it's helping the bees. And then a lot of these tomatoes along here, I'm leaving in just to get the rest of the fruit that's ripening. And then I'm pretty sure I'm gonna rip it out because they're looking really sick, um, most of them. So like this is, these three are um, triple crop. So while well, like you can see that there's fruit down the bottom, but there hasn't really, apart from these ones, there hasn't really been any fruit getting set up top. I think it got, I think they got sick before it was able to start doing that. 
I mean, there are some blossoms there, but I, I won't let them set. I'm just waiting for that one. Um, this one is mm, yellow ox heart. So we've, we've had a few of that, which is really, really good. And there's some blossoms set up here, but um, there's one green one down there that's pretty small and doesn't look super great. So I might, uh, it's hard to like work out, you gotta make a sacrifice of what are you gonna leave or if you rip it out and you put something fresh in to be able to let it go. So I might um, end up ripping that out because I also don't, I've ripped out the Thai pink egg that was here and cut back some of the basil and I've planted two new tomato plants. So there's one there and there's one over there and they're just a yellow cherry pear. Um, and so I don't want them to get sick from these ones. So once sort of some of these fruits ripen, I'll probably just rip out all of the tomatoes over there. And it's the same for these ones over here. So I ripped out um, the orange cherry that was there and that's the new yellow pear, cut back the basil. This one I forgot to cut out the stump when I was removing it, it was really sick. It was a tigerella, I think. And it was only a small fruit, I thought they were big ones. So it was cool to see it, but I don't think I'll grow that one again. Um, these next three, they're the Dr. Witchies, which have done really good. Um, even though they're starting to get, they're still looking a bit sick. This was the one that um, I, it, the top of it snapped off and I let um, one of the side leader stems grow. And so it's still doing well, but it, the whole plant is still kind of looking a little, excuse me, a little bit sick. At the top it looks um, a bit more healthy, but um, there's not a lot of fruit set up the top. So I will probably do the same with these ones down here. It look, this plant here is a Dr. Witchies and it looks healthy up the top. It has actually set fruit up the top, but it is still sick down the bottom. So we'll see, but it still has like quite a few green fruit on it ripening. So this one might stay. These ones will go once the fruit has ripened. And the same for these tomatoes down here. These three are Brandywine Pinks, which were very confusing. They looked very similar to the triple crops. There was, um, I had to make sure I knew which ones I were picking to take inside for seed saving because they looked so similar. Um, but once these, once I've collected the ripe fruit from here, I will probably take these out as well. There's, although there is like still one up here. So the top of it looks um, healthy. I need to tie it up, but it still looks sick down the bottom. So that one will come out once those fruit are ripened. They're not very far off. And then I've got some more basil here. This um, brandy wine I might take out because it's sort of just getting overtaken by the cucumelon, which is amazing. But I found I haven't been, we haven't been snacking on it as much as we have previously. And you see how much it has taken over that trellis there. Uh, yeah, I'm still undecided. It looks really pretty and it's cool to have little snacks, but I honestly haven't been eating a whole lot of them. Um, so we've been giving them to friends and whatnot, but I don't know, do I want to leave it as something that looks pretty or actually take it out and plant something like I could plant um, maybe some beans to go up or something like that. I'll have to work out something once I take out all the tomato plants anyway. So yeah, still working that out. Uh, and then there's just my um, sweet my kind of reds here. I think some of them got sun scalds because this corner can get um, pretty hot um, in the afternoon because the sun just comes in here and it just holds all the heat in. So I need to pick what peppers I have that um, are good. Let's see that one's doing okay. And I also don't know, I don't know if it's sun, just sun scald or if it's fruit fly. But yeah, most of these peppers are, I think that one's been stung. Most of these peppers are pretty good. And most of them look ripe. They are pretty thin skin. Quite hard to sit down now. Um, they are pretty thin skinned. Let's see if I can show you. Make sure there's no bugs. Oh. Actually, this one's pretty good. And it's completely sweet. It's not a hot pepper at all. I have to say this one is better than probably the first one I had. It's a lot thicker skin, which is 
nicer because you get more flavor. It's more, um, it's more crisp. It's not just like you get a lot of flavor in, I think in the, in the, in the water of it. Like it's more refreshing, I think than the first one I had. So maybe I will grow this one again. Cause I was thinking that I might not, but it's done so well in that pot. I have been fertilizing it with just like a liquid fertilizer every now and then. Um, and it's um, surprisingly, it's made a comeback, I think. So that's just about it of what's going on in the garden at the moment, we're kind of in the middle of, well, it's January. So we're kind of in the middle of our summer. So things are petering out, but I have plenty of time to plant new things and to get them to grow so I can harvest them. So I just need to um, make that effort so that things can get growing again. So I'll probably be going through my seeds today and working out what I want to plant and get them planted. <laughs> Mmm, that is very good.